Welcome to the fourth part of Spring Boot with Kubernetes tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to look at how we can use Flyway for database migrations. In the previous episode, we have created a JPA entity called Bookmark. Also, we have used Hibernate's auto or uh, table generation support uh, using this Hibernate RTDL update. Uh, property configuration but uh, it is not a good approach for uh, managing the database schema in the production grade applications why let's say we have this entity and we have created uh, a property called title uh, which maps to a column name uh, title but let's say we want to change uh, title to something else maybe name or something else when we do that and when we start the application again, what is going to happen? It is not going to rename the existing column title to name. It's going to create a new column called name, right? So it is not entirely in your control how these changes in the entities are going to affect the schema. So uh, it is better to have a, a proper database migration tool to use uh, in business applications so spring spring boot actually supports two uh, widely used uh, database migration tools one is flyway and another one is liquibase we are going to use flyway because it is sufficient for our use case and liquibase, liquibase is equally a good alternative also okay also uh, while having this uh, database migration scripts we can see which change is introduced in which version things like that okay so uh, first let us start the application first and then see in the console log what is happening uh, regarding this database creation because we have enabled uh, to show the sql that is getting generated we can see how the database is created so here we can see currently we are using H2 database and this is the uh, URL and right now it did not found any um, flyway migrations so it just logged a warning and then it is saying it created a uh, base flyway schema history table and uh, it is no migrations necessary and then here you can see it created a uh, table bookmarks and also created a uh, bookmark ID sequence. Okay. Uh, instead of uh, hibernate generating this one, we can generate, uh, we can create this migration script by ourselves. So by default, when we are using flyway, uh, let us open this pawn.xml. While generating the application, we have selected flyway as well. So this dependency got added automatically and Spring Boot auto configuration mechanism detects if there are any flyway migration scripts under SRC main resources uh, DB migration uh, directory okay and usually flyway migrations follow a naming pattern like v version number underscore underscore and whatever the description you want to give uh, create bookmarks table dot sql okay so remember it's not one underscore it is two underscores and you can even uh, use the uh, versions like v1.1 things like that but uh, for keep it simple uh, we are going to use v123 like that okay and let us uh, we can even create these statements by ourselves but uh, they are good enough to copy and change it okay so here uh, first let us create a sequence vm id sequence start with 1 and divide by 50 why 50 because hibernate by default uses this increment by 50 so that's why it is used here and we have this create table which takes id title url i would like to move this created at column to the bottom okay 
and one more thing right now we are not specifying uh, how to use this sequence uh, for this id so what we can do we can specify a default value for id default and we can use this next val function by giving the sequence name so this way whenever you try to insert a record without giving the id value uh, then it's going to automatically take the next value from the sequence and then automatically insert into it okay cool so let us start the application and see how uh, flyway behaves so here if you take a look at the logs we can see uh, has to in memory database is started and then here we can see initial flyway schema history table got created and then the first migration create bookmarks table got executed okay uh, what we can do we can take a look at the database using has to console so let us copy this jdbc url and let us go to has to console localhost 800 slash has to console so by default it is going to be available uh, in this url so here you can see uh, has to driver and jdbc url is going to change dynamically whenever you restart the server it is going to change so you need to take it from the console here and username is sa password is uh, blank now we can connect to it so here um, so here you can take a look at this we have bookmarks table created and then there is this bm id sequence got created in addition to those uh, what we created in our, our flyway migration script this flyway underscore schema history table also got created so let us take a look at what it contains so it has install rank version description type um, script name and checksum so uh, what it does is it's going to take all the uh, flyway migration scripts from this directory and it sorts based on the uh, version numbers here and then try to execute one by one okay uh, here as of now we have we have only one script so it got executed so this table is going to uh, keep track of what uh, migrations are already executed and what are the new migrations that needs to be executed let's say if you add a new migration script it figures out by looking at this table okay we have already executed this v1 uh, uh, script so it's going to check is there any newer version schemas that i need to execute and it will execute them and another thing is let's say we have uh, already executed this v1 create bookmark stable right and it also captures this uh, checksum but if you change uh, any content here it's going to generate a different checksum and the comparison fails and it's going to uh, fail to start the application so the thumb rule is once you execute any uh, flyway uh, migration script you are not supposed to change it you are supposed to create a new uh, flyway script and then uh, do the necessary change you don't touch the already executed uh, migration scripts okay cool so now that we have um, flyway migrations ready let us see is there any configurable properties uh, regarding flyway so here we can see um, sometimes we want to uh, introduce flyway in a um, in an application that is already having the existing database so in that case you can configure this baseline on migration uh, set to true so it's going to consider what are is what are the database that we already have as a baseline and from then onwards it's going to start executing the newer migrations available and another interesting thing is uh, in our application dot properties we haven't configured any database properties which database to connect to and all right so here uh, because we are using has to in memory database it's going to use the same default database to uh, run these migrations as well 
okay and the credentials are also going to be used from the same database uh, credentials but sometimes you might want to use a different set of credentials for running the migrations flyway migrations the reason being uh, for your main application you might not want uh, to give uh, certain privileges whereas for running the migrations you need some elevated privileges so in that case what you can do you can use a spring flyway um, username password so you can set a different set of credentials uh, to use uh, for executing the flyway migrations okay here you can see um, password and similarly you can have username so you can use different credentials than the actual application database credentials okay another interesting property that we can use is spring flyway locations so by default it is uh, configured to class path db migration but uh, let us say we are building a product and uh, we want it to work with any kind of database uh, based on the user choice. So in that case, uh, and another uh, challenge in that case is uh, maybe the SQL scripts that are working on Oracle, the syntax might not work on the PostgreSQL or MySQL. So in that case, you want to maintain a different set of um, um, scripts for each type of database. So in that case, what you can do, uh, specify the location as class path column slash db slash migration slash vendor so here when you specify this vendor uh, spring boot is going to determine what type of database you are trying to use and use this particular folder so in this case instead of directly putting the uh, schema migration scripts here we are using h2 right so we are going to create a directory called h2 and we'll put the scripts under this directory and later if you are trying to use um, let's say postgres scale what we can do we can create a directory db migration slash postgres okay so here you can have the same set of scripts but maybe a slightly different syntax or whatever right so in this case with this configuration property it's going to spring boot is going to figure out the vendor uh, and then it's going to use appropriate uh, uh, scripts it has to postgres or uh, mysql whatever the database you are trying to use okay let us understand how spring boot results the vendor a placeholder name so if you go to this flyway auto configuration class there is a static class called location resolver which contains this placeholder vendor so here if you take a look at this vendor which is nothing but the database driver not get id so what is this database driver so this database driver is nothing but a enum which contains a various uh, enum constants for different types of databases if you take a look at this h2 it has what is the product name and what is the driver class name what is the xa data source class name so etc details based on the type of the driver we are using to connect to our database it is going to look up what is the associated database driver and then figure out the vendor value so right now we are using h2 org.h2 driver so this is the associated database driver with that database right and how the vendor name is derived if you go back and see here vendor is nothing but once we look up the database driver we are calling this get id and it is nothing but taking the name of the driver in our case capital h2 and lower casing it so uh, when we are using h2 database it is going to be lower case h2 if you are using postgresql it's going to be postgresql in our lower case letters so that's how spring boot is resolving the Try vendor name. I have created a second um, migration script which inserts a few sample records into the bookmarks table. So here um, we have a script in H2 and also uh, another separate script for Postgres as well. So here if you notice uh, we are inserting created at uh, value 
for h2 we need to call a current timestamp as a function whereas for uh, postgresql it is like a simple current timestamp we don't uh, need to give a function like uh, parentheses here so like this if you have differences in different databases this feature comes very handy like uh, you can specify this path based on the different vendor and you can have a uh, database specific migrations as a separate folder so this comes really handy so i think uh, this is all we need for now for starting with flyway migrations so what we can do uh, earlier we have uh, created this uh, sample data uh, we don't need it anymore uh, because we are inserting through uh, scripts here so let me delete this data initializer okay now let me restart the application so here we can see it executed both uh, two scripts right Good. now if we go back and execute our api uh, we are getting the data cool now totally we have 12 records nice i think that's all we need for now uh, to use flyway migrations and in the next episode we are going to look at how to use ttvo projections instead of reading entities thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next videos bye bye